What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all as the future episodes, I guess. I don't know. This introduction started off weird. Every now and again, this happens where I get like a weird vocal thing that happens. And when I start an episode, I start a thought and then it goes somewhere. And then I have to decide whether 20 seconds into the episode, I just want to like restart and redo the intro or not. I'm going to stick it out this time. I'm feeling good things about this situation. In our previous day, we had finally looted out the noisy mausoleum, a place which had deleted my save and done a bunch of other random buggy shenanigans. I'm pretty glad we don't have to go back there again. It's the first map in the game that I was like, eh, I don't feel good about this. After it deleted my save, I was like, nah, we're not... It didn't technically delete my save, I guess. It migrated it to a different folder and then deleted it so that when I turned the game on, it said there were no saves. I checked, there was no patch, and I was like, oh man, this is no good. Anyways, everything seems to have turned out alright. Ooh, there's a medical dictionary right there. Isn't that the thing that... Hold on. Sh didn't we want to give that to... Take the medical dictionary. We've got medicinal marijuana. We've got a bunch of deodorant and a bunch of sleeping pills. We have so many things to give out right now. And I don't even know who wants what anymore. So I think in between episodes, we're not going to give that stuff out right now. What we'll do, though, is in between episodes, I'll do a little bit of research and I'll figure out what other people want. And once they figure it out... We'll see if we can make it work. How's your English coming along? Nani? Okay, so she doesn't have any English skills yet. I don't know how long it's going to take Ryan to get her trained up. Let's see here. She was the one that needed a medical dictionary, right? Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe I have to give it to her mom, because wasn't her mom trying to force her to like learn more or something like that, even though she didn't want to? There it is. Oh, for heaven's own sake, I don't believe it. If it's not exactly what I had in mind, it's close enough. Bless you, I'll make sure that she gets this. It'll help her and it'll help all of us. Thank you. I think that self-fulfillment in a situation like this, if I had medical skills personally, I understand that she's a vet and she doesn't want to work on people, but she's the only person here that knows how to stitch a wound, that might know how to do a suture. So honestly, for the greater good of the colony, she kind of needs to do this. Self-actualization be damned, we need a doctor, and you're the closest thing we got. If we can get a doctor, absolutely, you can step down and you can go back to being a vet and working with the horses and, you know, other animals, but for right now, I don't know. If I was in that situation and I was a vet, I would do my damnedest to use my abilities to keep other people alive because I think that's your responsibility. If you have the ability to save somebody, you always should. And I don't say that lightly, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to do those sorts of things, especially if it's not something that's particularly pleasant or easy to accomplish. And you still got to do what's right. Still got to do what's right. It's kind of like what Paul said. You'll know you're doing the right thing because it'll be difficult, and it'll be a hard choice, and it'll suck, and there'll be no way out of it. That's how you know it's the right thing to do. That's how I always know in real life what the right thing to do is. It always sucks. Look at the two options. The easy one, that's the that's the bad one. The one that's super difficult and is going to totally suck all the way through, that's probably the right solution to the problem. Let's see here. We've got 250 more morale. People moving on up. The cat got the food. We got that right there. 54. We brought back a whole bunch of food today. Like, seriously, a lot of food. We gained 144. We're still not quite there, though. I'm still a little bit... Our food supplies are looking bad, so I think what we want to focus on after this, we're eating, how much are we eating? We're eating 54 a day. It looks like, maybe. Wait, that should be 74.5, shouldn't it? So how did this come out to 54.9? Hmm. I'm probably missing something right now, so I'm not going to look at it for too long. But either way, assuming that we use up 70-something food per day, that means we're still barely over, like, the two-and-a-half-week margin. We need, like, long-term food. Oh, shit, we got attacked. The undead have done four damage to the fence. The earliest they could attack again is day 29. I don't even know where we look at what day it is. Eight attackers with two on duty. The fence is now at 97.3%. Oh, it's fine. Whatever. Who cares? While walking to the cafeteria, you spot a visitor at the front gate. The dog looks almost grateful to see you. This is the first time I've been happy to see something drooling at the fence. The dark barks and wags his tail. Yeah, let me take a look at you. We need to make sure you don't have, like, any weird, like, leukemia or anything. Because if you drag that in, you'll kill the cat. But, getting a better look at the dog, he looks thin. As long as his hair's not falling out and he doesn't have any, like, weeping eyes or anything like that. Let's see here. You want to come in? The dog seems hesitant to approach you and remains outside your reach. Well, here, let's convince him a little bit. You hold out your hand with the food. The dog looks you over, then moves closer, and finally takes the food from your hand. After finishing, the dog barks and licks your hand. You open the gate a crack, and the dog runs in. It looks like you've got a new friend at the shelter. Let's have a look at this name tag. The dog's name tag reads Lightning. 
Lightning has joined the shelter. Hey, I don't usually get sick, but I can't keep any food down. I tried to get ready this morning, but I could barely stand up. I really don't think I can be of any use to you today. Well, you always work your ass off. Of course you can take the day off. I'm sure you'll make it up tomorrow. Definitely I will. Trust me, I'd rather be working than sitting on my ass. Plus, I can't have sick people. If you make yourself worse, like, eh, sick people are a big, big problem. You don't think about it until you're in this situation. There's no hospital. There's no support structure. There's no anything for you right now if you get sick. And so the flu is now actually like a deadly thing again. The flu can kill you now, even with modernity. People still die from the flu every year in the first world. Going to the hospital and everything, there's just nothing you can do about it. And so in a world like this, you gotta figure, like, every little thing that goes wrong could be an issue. Hey, I thought you said you were going to bed. Why are you standing around the hall for, lollygagging? I think it's time for another confession. I started doing this when I thought I'd come into the station, play what I wanted, have a few laughs, and eventually get arrested. I thought it would be a matter of days. In fact, I was paranoid that the door would be kicked in at any moment and I was going to be dragged off. Sure, I brought, I brought plenty of supplies with me just in case, but I was pretty sure I wasn't going to get away with this for very long. Well, the days went on and it seemed like less of a goof and more like a responsibility. But still, I waited for that door to be busted in to have someone in authority, someone from structured organization, to come in and take me out of here. I'd wake up in the morning and just hope today was that day. I didn't care if I went away for a year, I just wanted somebody to be out there with the authority, with the resources, and with the order. But it never happened. So much time has passed in this shitty little building, and I'm faced with the prospect that no one is coming. There's nobody out there to clean up this mess, no fines, no losing my job, no offense, because there's no establishment to give a shit. That's frightening. As much as I told myself I hated authority, it's all gone. There's you, me, and the dead. And now that it's sunk in, I'm kind of... Terrified. Except not kinda at all. Anyways, I thought I'd share. Yeah, things aren't looking so good for us right now. Things are not looking so good for the world. How do you tell what day it is? We need to figure this out, like, right now. Let's see here. Shelter. Yath. Let's see. What day is it? Like, where do you tell what day it is? We only have 28 antibiotics? Oh, that's so bad. God. Alright, well, we have 81 construction supplies. A few more skills right there. Yeah, I'm still not sure where I see what day it is. I'm sure it's, like, right in front of my face somewhere. Somebody will probably shout it out at me in the comments. It's okay, you guys can do it. Feel free to shout at me. I give you permission. Type everything in caps. All comments, that's it. This episode, all comments in caps. It's a rule. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't even know where we see what day it is. They said they we wouldn't get attacked until day 29, but I'm not even sure where we see what day it is. It's got to be around here somewhere, right? It's got to be in here. I figure maybe on the goals thing? Statistics, maybe. We could find it here, possibly? Yeah, I don't see it in here, either. What? We've traveled 2,430 miles in like 30 days? I don't know. Maybe it's adding people's walks together right there, but that seems really unlikely. 800 miles we've done on a horse already? I think it might be overestimating. People should be getting pretty happy pretty soon. Elaine's still upset? Let me see if I can get her finished up right now. I know what she wants. She wants sleeping pills and deodorant. So if we can bump her up a notch to content, it would help us. So let's maybe go through here and see if with the unique stuff, what do we have? Wasp spray. Scrap. A piece of scrap metal for use in the recycler upgrade. Really? Oh, I didn't even know that we had that. Okay. Well, hell, recycle it. Cool. Cool. We got two parts and three scraps. I should probably do that right now, too. Let's go through, and I'll show you how this whole process goes. So, essentially, for every three pounds of stuff you recycle, you get one part. And so, if you wanted to do, like, let's see here. Let's say that I wanted to do, like, five of these bats, right? I would recycle those, and it does save the remainder so that it gets added on the next time that you recycle. So, do that in one sitting if you can. We got five hunting rifles. It's a lot of hunting rifles. I'm not so convinced that's going to be that useful, though. We got 13 hammers. It's a lot of stuff here that we don't necessarily need. Like, for example, these knives. I would probably recycle a large majority of these as well, since I'm not going to use them as weapons. We'll probably get a couple of parts out from there. These monkey wrenches I'm going to keep in case we have to do repairs around here. You shouldn't destroy tools. Just tools will probably be useful in the future. However, these right here weigh a ton. 
And I would rather, I don't think we're going to need eight sawed-offs. I don't even think we need any sawed-offs, but I'll keep two just in case. There you go, 14 parts out. And this is a great way to keep yourself ahead of the gear curve, just in case you're trying to build stuff. We'll go four right there. We still don't have a person that can do the science that's required in order to get a lot of this stuff done. Probably destroy some of these Glocks, too. Like, maybe, actually, I'll save them, just in case we got to make the firing range or whatever. What else do I have? Combat machetes. We'll probably keep those for right now. We still have the AR, too. I might use the AK at some point, but not right now. Other things we could feasibly get rid of. Probably a cleaver. The kukri I'll probably keep. The kukri actually looks like it might be a little bit more useful. It looks like it does quite a bit of damage. I might try and give that to somebody. Get rid of those right there for six more parts. For my character, he's actually not even carrying a bladed weapon. I might give him the kukri just in case we have to go fight humans. Maybe in his hands it'll do something... A little bit more efficient. It looks like it only costs two, though. It's got a pretty good chance to counter as well, so I'll keep it. I'll keep it. We've recycled a whole bunch of stuff. Let's check our job list right now. We'll see if maybe they can get some stuff done here while we wait. I think that it is feasible and possible that we could be finishing something up. Oh, we're not finishing something up today. Lightning has no job. I think you can put lightning on guard duty, though, which is where he's really, really useful. His melee is solid. He's got like a stupid amount of AP from what I read somewhere. So I'm thinking we might be able to use him to do something useful. I mean, I don't know. Davis, I'm going to need you on a reinforced fence, huh? I'm going to get you guys on the garage. I'd like it to be done today, actually. He's in party. Oscar's sick. Melina's good to go. We'll give her the garage duty. Chef, custodian, Michiru's unavailable. And we're not going to make it still. We still have quite a bit of time until that's finished. You have, oh, 10 hours of workable time, I think. You start at 8 in the morning, go till 9, so 9 hours of workable time. That gets it close enough. In the next two days, it should be done. From there, we'll jump on into the workshop and see if we can get that finished. After the workshop, we'll start working on the possibility of maybe growing our own food. We've got a good back stock right now, but I don't want to get to a position where we've got a... I don't want to get into a position where we have to... Can I put him in my party? Is that even possible? No. Is it because we're full? Hold on. Let me take somebody out here. What if I take Elaine out? And then I take Lightning. Can Lightning be in my party? Oh, Lightning can. Hmm. I'm interested to see what Lightning is capable of. The only thing is that Lightning might not be so useful against anything that has armor. Might be worth swapping out Vic for a day just to see. Sure, why not? We'll take it easy today. We'll bring Vic, and then we'll have Elaine in our party as well. And so we'll see how Lightning does. I am interested to find out. I like to play around with weird characters like Lightning every now and again. If we could bring the cat along, I would totally bring the cat along. By the way, I would bring the cat along for all of our adventures. I would make it like a little backpack that I could wear, and it would look over my shoulder and be like, Mew! and be all excited about shit. It'd be great. It'd be the best. Now that I made that noise, you know my cat's going to come in here and start bothering me. He's like, hmm. I sense... The possibility of attention in the air. I'm going to go investigate. They're making cat sounds. Clearly that means they want me in there. Clearly. Lampasus. We've got the scrapyard. Cabin in the woods we already hit. I don't know where we should go. I suppose let's tool along the 67 and see what we can find up here. I'm going to go straight up the middle on this side just in case we missed anything in between. And then we'll just follow the 67 for a... Oh, a roadblock. That sounds enjoyable. Let's find out. Nobody's reloaded either. Oh, it's these guys fighting each other again. Okay. So if they're going to be fighting... How does... He's got 19 AP? Oh my god. How much weight can he carry? Can he carry anything at all? Can I get him one of those doggy backpacks? I didn't do that. I clicked on the inventory while we're on the subject. Whew. All right, so we got problems. We definitely have issues. I think I would prefer that I allow them to run out of ammunition before we get ourselves into any more trouble. We don't have a whole lot of guns on us, so our ability to deal with this fight is going to be a tad diminished. I think I'll probably advance just a little bit, just kind of like see where people fall in right now. Oh, that's right. He has no shooting skill. Because we took out Paul for him. Why is he carrying so much shit with him? Did it not unload that? Oh, man. I just wasted a bunch of time, didn't I? Damn it. All right. Well, we're going to have to go back to the shelter after this. 
We found a hospital, which is both a good and a bad thing, but we're not equipped for this fight right now. This is actually going to be ugly for us unless we can handle it. I don't know how much damage the dog's going to be able to deal either. Or if the dog can get infected by biting all the random people. So long as the guy with the slug throwing 357 is out of the way, I think we should be alright. I'm going to set this as the active. We have no guns though to solve problems here, so just like, word of warning, this might not go so well. This is not the event that I was looking for at the moment. This is actually probably one of the worst events you can get. I'll move them all up. Okay, so he's going to sledge that guy on the plus side. It doesn't even look like there's anybody fighting anybody, to be honest. It looks like they're all just hitting each other randomly. I always thought this fight was like coyotes versus bandits, but honestly, it looks like they're just all just like randomly shooting each other. You know a whole bunch of zombies are about to show up because he won't start he won't stop popping off with that stupid revolver, so any second now we should have a horde of undead coming down on top of us. Yeah, these looters are all shooting each other. I don't think they're actually like associating with each other. We're just gonna wait. Let's just wait it out. Maybe take the dog in in just a second. He should be out of ammo, or she should be out of ammo really, really shortly. But she uses a sledgy too, which is a problem. I don't really want to fight over here if I can help it, especially not with my medic being the first one in line. My hope here... Well, I was hoping the looters would solve these guys over here by hitting them a couple times and getting them all nice and tuned up before we started. I'll start working my way around this side of the building too. Yeah, we got Zeds coming in. Ooh, there it is. A big crunch. Took that railroad driver to the side of the head. A new driver is ready to be installed in your face. They're all moving in the opposite direction. What we really don't want to happen is for some of these guys who fell down to become a further issue. Let's get the dog in here. How much does it attack for? 5 AP? Does it have other attacks? It has takedown, it has bark, and it has ferocity. What does ferocity do? Alright. It costs you 5 AP to attack? Huh. Yeah, kill that. There we go. At least the AI is being smart this time around. I'll have them stand together real fast. The armor may actually block the dog from being able to accomplish anything. And if we can wait out some of these gunshots, it might make our life a little easier. Thin these guys out the easy way. And in fact, I should probably use his time here to grab a Kukri real fast. Because these are all humans. Let's get up in here. It's that time. Wait and see what the AI decides to do. The AI has decided to use its turn to smash that guy right there, which is actually a good thing because we don't want the zombies biting people and bringing them back. And you're dealing with a whole bunch of armored zombies that are ready for war. Major, major issue to be had. We may have something coming up behind us too would be the other problem that I think of. I'm not going to put my dog in harm's way right now because I care about my animals. I may take lightning back though because it seems like against any armored foe he's not really going to be able to do much. She? It? I don't know. There we go. Knocked out another one. So what we'll do is we'll arrange ourselves over here so that we're ready to receive Giggity after these guys are done dealing with each other. There are still some Zeds around too. Okay, so they're coming up behind us. That's alright. I can deal with that. Or we can send lightning out to deal with it. I don't know what ferocity did right there. It cost 7 AP and it didn't really accomplish much. Not so positive. There we go. They should be able to like handle each other. And then we can just wait on these guys to all get up in here. One by one. We get really lucky, the zombies might not even be interested in all of us. Oh, he's going to hang out over there and keep on attacking? Okay, that's fine. If they all want to sort each other out, I'm not going to complain. I'll just wait for the Zeds to get here, and then we'll deal with it. He can whack enemies one by one with his big old sledgehammer. God, that would be gnarly, putting somebody out with a sledgehammer. That would be a nasty, nasty business. Putting anybody out with any weapon would be a nasty business. Who 
Probably have Tweedle time to step back slightly on this side. Let's get rid of the Zed or miss the Zed. That works too. If we get knocked down right now, we have a very, very serious problem in front of us. So if either one of them gets tackled by the undead, it means that this guy can essentially run in and like do a killing blow real fast, which will be all kinds of crazy terrible. Okay, so we survived it. Let's hang out and see what this guy does. Deal with our zombie friends. And there we go. I'm going to get in here and start fighting with this guy. We had eight points right there. Eight points, okay. Man, you and your accuracy. You and your accuracy. Alright, well, let's get the dog in here. See if we get any damage done. There's five. Five. And eleven. Not too bad. With the dog, I feel like we're begging for a crit. Is what we're really looking for. If you get hit by a sledgehammer, you kind of deserve it. Like, somebody can't wind up a sledgehammer and just, like, hit you. You've got to know that it's coming well in advance. That or like a sneak attack with a sledgehammer, I guess. Although, sneaking up on somebody with a sledgey seems unlikely as well. This guy's probably toast. There it is. Leave it for doggy poo here. There we go. Dog handled it. How much can the dog carry? 90 pounds? Really? The dog can carry loot? That's pretty swell. Cool. We can load up our dog with 90 pounds. That's a pretty good carrying weight for a dog, all things considered. 90 pounds for a dog is intense. I wonder if that's just due to the fact that they had to keep the stat distribution the same for the creature as they did with humans in order to make it work. But still, like, being able to carry 90 pounds actually makes that a fairly useful party member, if only for pack muling. I mean, probably not acceptable in real life. I mean, well, we still have sled dogs and stuff. I don't know, if you got a working dog, it's a working dog. I take that back. I rephrase that entirely. That's going to cost us 12 to put on him. What's that going to cost? 5? Alright, that'll work. I'll tell you what, my dad always maintained that he didn't like cats until he had like a working cat. Like a cat that actually did something for the household. And now he loves that thing. My cat, my dad, you know, he always said he's not a cat person, he doesn't like cats, etc. But he's got this field cat now that he adopted. And he puts it out in the front field to kill rats and gophers and things like that and keep them out of the field. He loves that thing. Gives it, like, extra portions that the other cats don't get. He gives it, like, scraps of steak and things like that. He loves that cat. Because he, he says he likes it because it serves a function. He said the cat does something around the house and earns its keep. It's always coming back in with, like, dead rats and dead mole. My, my dad has a long-standing hatred of moles. Like, seriously, my dad cannot stand moles. Like, when, you see a, when he sees a mole, you can see his blood pressure, like, visually going up. All right, so we're out of here. And I'm not talking about moles, like, on the side of your face. I'm talking about, like, moles that dig in the ground, like, Sweet! diggy, 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 diggy. Those kinds of moles. That roadblock. I, apparently, I forgot to unload all my loot over here, too. I really feel like going to a clinic is a terrible idea. Like, where's the first place that everybody goes when they know there's going to be, like, major, like, upheavals and problems? Probably to a hospital, right? That's also the last place that they're going to give up if it's a government agency. I bet the military would fight to the last soldier to keep a hospital up and running because the stuff that's there is valuable. Alright, so I got my weapons right there. Apparently, I forgot to unload everybody because I'm a giant dunce. So let me go ahead and handle that real fast. We'll recycle some of these guns later on. Let me see here. We got Vicky. He's got everything. We got lightning. At least it's easy to find lightning on the list. Another 357 with no ammo. That's okay, though. I don't mind. We'll unload the dog. The downside there is that the dog can't use armor, which means the dog is always going to be taking maximum damage from everything. And then we also had Grant. I think I forgot to unload him just because I forgot he was in my group. I thought I had Paul in my group for some reason. I don't know. Let's get this guy unloaded, though. I'm also going to unequip him because we have no use in his part. He doesn't do anything for our party anymore, and I'd rather have more shooters with us. So let's take him back in. We'll get Paul here. Paul's already loaded up except for his armor, so let's get him re-equipped real fast. Get that suit on. He's got his gun. Okay, that's all looking fine. We've got who else here? We want to take a look around for Vicky. Vicky's looking good. All right, Victor. Okay, everybody's looking swell. Let me swap out the party arrangement real fast. I don't know if we want to go back to the clinic. I feel like something's going to go down if we go to the clinic. Either we're going to pick up six, we're gonna, either we're going to pick up sick people, or we're going to make a whole lot of friends while we're there. One or the other. So anyways, let's put Vic back in the party. Oh, he can't be reassigned now? Or maybe he can. Hold on. Let me see here. Where's all my in-party people? 
Let's put you on guard duty. Grant White, let's put you on the garage to help out with that. And then from there, I need Paul. Where's Paul at? There he is. Put him back in the party. That should be everybody, right? I want to check it one more time to make sure. One. A two. A three. Okay, so we've got everybody that we need. Got everybody that we need. On and out we go, I guess. I think we got a couple minutes. No, we got like one minute left, and then I got to go for my run, and then I got to start the stream. So we got like one minute left, but that'll give us time to at least scout the 26. Or I'm sorry, the 67. I don't know why I said the 26 right there. Like I said, one of those days where just verbally things are not occurring the way that I want them to. It took us a couple hours to get out here, so I should leave a couple hours to get back by that token. We got a Coleman over here. Dandelion Field. Not going to worry about it. Ballinger Hospital. I'll probably hit the clinic first, I think, and then we'll go back over to here. Yeah, let's go to the clinic real fast. We'll keep an eye out. The military guys in this game are no joke. So you just basically don't want to be anywhere that the military is because they have, like, grenades and, like, rocket launchers and all kinds of crazy shit that they can insta-give your party with. All right, so we're at the clinic. This is where I'm going to break it off. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in the upcoming episodes. Take care out there, everybody. And as always, it's been my pleasure and my privilege to be your host. I do.